My name is Liz Van Son. I am a mosaic artist at Cast Hill Studio in Hopkinton, New Hampshire. I've been making mosaics for about eight years. I have been working with watercolor and drawing and a lot of different art forms and I found myself going a lot more towards the tactile and I discovered a book that really got me excited about mosaic and I just plunged in and I've been doing it ever since. This larger mosaic here is a community mosaic project that was done at the Day of the Dead celebration on Halloween 2009 at the part of the Concord uh, Community, sorry, Concord Arts Market. And um, D Day of the Dead is a celebration to celebrate the dead in Mexico. And uh, I just thought it would be really fun to have something a little bit more dimensional for people to work on. So I built these skulls for people to mosaic. And then we have flowers and crosses. And I think it was a really successful project. We had a lot of people working on it. Uh, community mosaic projects are so important to me because they're a way for me to come out of the studio and share what I do with a larger public and uh, have pe time with other people and uh, get people involved who might not have otherwise had a chance to do anything creative in their lives. You know, maybe they've absolutely never done anything creative or they've always wanted to try mosaic, but this way when I uh, actually, the, the way that I begin is I go out into the public with a mosaic that is uh, laid out on the substrate. This community mosaic project was started at the Huntington Retirement Community in Nashua, and that's a retirement community for senior citizens, and this was during the craft festival that they had this past fall. And uh, the theme is love, so there are three hearts here, and uh, a lot of people came and, and worked on it. Unfortunately, it was a shorter day, so we didn't have a chance to finish it, but people who did participate in it had a lot of fun. And uh, you can see here, this is all recycled glass. You can tell these pieces with the little ridges in them are bottles. Concord Main Street display right now is part of the Con uh, Main Street Concord's downtown empty storefront window display initiative. And that is uh, an organization that was formed with the intention of filling in the empty storefronts in downtown Concord and bringing some real life and energy to the downtown. And It's not just for artists, it's for organizations, uh, any activities that are taking place. And I was very lucky. Uh, I understand they're booked out into the year 2011 and they actually approached me when they saw one of my projects at the Concord Arts Market and said, would you like to do this? So uh, that is now located, the window display is now located uh, next to the Red River Theater on Main Street. My process begins, as I say, a lot of times with the materials. Uh, I will have the object in mind, if it's a chair or a frame or a sculpture, and I'll just live with that shape for a while. And uh, because I'm in my studio, I'm always surrounded by my materials. So I have the china, I have the glass, and I'll just start spreading things out on the table and moving things around until I come up with combinations that I like. And that I tend to work very spontaneously, so I'll often just go for it. I don't really do sketches at all. This is a diamond blade wet saw, and I'm in love with this because this is a very different saw in that because it has a blade, which is right here, that is round, that allows me to cut in any direction I want to with this glass. So I can cut out a very specific shape versus cutting with a, uh, a glass cutting tool. It's somewhat limiting. Uh, this just offers amazing detail and I can cut pretty much anything. I can cut stone, plastic, china, glass, you name it. And, uh, it's also portable. I can remove this from the reservoir, but it's really opened up a lot of possibilities for me in my work, so I love it.
One of the benefits of this tool also is that it grinds the glass as it cuts, so I don't have any sharp edges. Those are actually like they, as if they've been sanded now. This is a piece of china that I've already cut in half. This came from a saucer. This was just something I've got at a flea market. It wasn't very expensive. Uh, a lot of people think that you can take a hammer and just start smashing away, and you can certainly do that, but you lose a lot of the design. So, for example, if I wanted to save this area of the design, I can take these cutters and literally choose what I want by putting it on the edge of the china and just giving it a squeeze. I get exactly the piece that I want. Most of the mosaics that you make, you don't want to have this thick rim in, so you might come along and just nip. A lot of people think that mosaic is all about smashing things with a hammer. I would say that is really not true. Actually smashing, you want to make sure that whatever you're uh, going to smack with a hammer is wrapped up in a towel or something like that so the pieces don't fly everywhere. got a nice handle there that I can save. So what I, what I might want to do from here is refine it a little bit further. Using my nippers I can cut this handle off. pieces here. These are six by six and these were created for a show uh, sponsored by the Women's Caucus for Art that was in Manchester this past fall. Uh, every year uh, the members are given four six by six panels and we each create our own uh, artworks on them and I think I'm the only mosaic artist in the organization here so I have a lot of fun with these. This is the second year that I've done mosaic pieces and this is actually called Jazz Series because they're based on different pieces of jazz music that I like. I think we have Thelonious Monk in there and Miles Davis and a few other people. Um, well, this, the, the red and white frame is, is sort of um, my foster child, I guess. I, I don't really know how to describe this piece. It's, it's been through uh, a lot. And the blue and white mirror is um, an example of how I use these smaller pieces here are actually, uh, I believe this is from Red Rose Tea. Um, they come with these little things they call wades. And these are figures that I collect. I probably have around 200, 300 figures, something like that. I like to incorporate those in a lot of my work just as an added interest. And then you can see there are marbles here and there are handles. And that was a combination of a lot of different materials. And, I had a lot of fun with that piece. This is actually made by my son. And this workshop I call Mosaics to Go because it's a relatively simple process that anybody can do and it's pretty quick and at the end of a you know three or four hour workshop you have a finished mosaic. The residency I'll be doing is the second week in April at an elementary school in Barnstead and it's fourth, fifth, and sixth graders and they're very excited to start. They've already come up with their themes for the projects. It's going to be four large panels. They're about four by five feet tall. It's at one of the entrance ways to the school. And they've chosen the theme of love, peace, and happiness for three of the panels. And the fourth is going to be a free-for-all for faculty and staff to participate as well. And I imagine I'll have upwards of 100 kids a day coming through and working on these panels. So we'll be working uh, away from the actual uh, installation site and then moving the pieces and installing them uh, in situ after they're all done. So, very exciting. We'll be working with recycled glass.